I am an independent curator, which I always thought was a verb, to curate, but it actually isn't. It's, it's a noun. There's no such thing as I curated a show. Being a curator to me is, is um, a, a job that has a, a lot of uh, love associated with it, but also a lot of responsibility um, and some mystery. Uh, the idea is to find objects uh, that fit into a theme that I may or another um, person uh, may come up with. I take a concept and I try to match the objects to that concept and, and that's really part of the, the, the joy of being a curator. Um, I think that uh, a, the role of a curator is to stimulate uh, people's view of art and also provoke them and make them think beyond the box of what their knowledge uh, or the limits of their knowledge may be. If I'm working it for a museum as a curator, I would oversee the permanent collection and make sure that it is well researched and stored um, and also be able to utilize it for exhibition purposes. So by doing the color in fire uh, defining moments in studio ceramics at the LA County Museum of Art in 2000, that was the first book that I worked on. Um, and I had to make sense of 238 pieces of ceramics. Why were they important? Why were these pieces in the collection? What did they tell? What story did they narrate to the viewer? So that after doing that book, I realized that that was a part of the job that I really um, was enamored of because, again, it was um, the sense of starting out uh, with, a, with a timeline, starting out from a beginning and finding everything that fits in to make the pieces fall into place and then summing it up at the end. That's what basically a book is. I'm on my sixth book now and they are ranging um, in subject matter from decorative arts, under which banner I would put ceramics, to design and to now I'm working on a book on interior designers and my next book will be on an architect and that's what really thrills me is the, the chance to learn something about the artist which maybe has not been published before. And the other part is the um, being a documentarian. I, I really like interviewing the artist because personally I like to know you know sort of the how the idea in an artist's head gets translated or interpreted into an object. So since then, I've worked on The Craft in America, uh, three episodes that have shown on PBS uh, started in May of 2007 and will continue to air. Now I'm working with the Archives of American Art and I'm assigned different artists to go out and ask sort of a, a battery of questions and I do that, um, but I also find that in doing that, we get off on other tangents or the artist has an opportunity to expound on things which are you know, near and dear to their heart. I would like to think that when I come up with a theme and group objects together in such a way to make aesthetic associations, that the public gets it somehow either experientially by being in the exhibition space or by reading uh, the text that uh, I've chosen uh, to interpret the objects. What I look for in an artist and as a writer as well is what is called an authentic voice. It is work that is not derivative. It is work that is personal uh, and uh, has a way of expressing its very individual meaning, but it also is universal. It has some link to universality. It can be meaningful to anybody at any time in any place on the globe. One thing that I, I find really important professionally is not to exclude things. Um, you know, when opportunities come up and you may think, well, I have never done that or that doesn't seem like that's on my career path, I think that's um, a, something that really people become very um, narrow-minded about and it's becoming much more difficult to be a generalist because there's too much information out there but rather than you know just always focusing in on I want to do this one thing I think it's better to be a little bit more flexible and sort of like let the waves wash over you and, and you don't know on what shore you might land.